when do we say, when do we say that the shear, that the lav, it produces a mamza according to Rebekiva, only if it's a lav, let's say, through a relative. For example, somebody, a, a person uh, rapes a woman, the son is not allowed to live, marry that particular woman, the anusa of his father, and for that, you get a lav. And if he does, we'll say the chulam mamza in the Rebekiva, because it's, it's a, why are you forbidden? Because it's related. But uh, lav in great love mamza, this outsider, who's marrying this woman who's supposed to, let's say, marry a brother-in-law. He's not related in any way to, um, to her. So therefore, it has nothing to do, it's not a lab of, mar- of, of relation. And therefore, Rabbi Kiva's mighty, the child there, that union is not a mamza. That's what they're up on here. Omar Abiyu Zavu, the Omar Rav, comes along with the name of the Rav, when I had to know, in Kiddushin, Toshin, be a woman. How do you know that there's actually no Kiddushin when it comes to a case of a Yavama? In other words, if let's say an outsider tries to marry a woman that is waiting to marry her brother-in-law, how do you know that the kedusha are not even affected? Not only is Allah not affected, because he says, Shinema says in Pasik, that the wife of the mace of let's say Reuben who died with no children should not go out and marry an Izar, marry a stranger. And it says Laisia. Sia means kedushin. So he's tightening literally, see, there is no kedushin. Like to hey, even if she proceeds to go through the motions of a marriage to a friend, nothing happens. Ushmul Amar Shmuel disagrees. He says, I'm not sure. But Aniyasenu, because of our impoverished knowledge, we're not sure. What does Lysia mean? Does Lysia mean there's no kedushin, or Lysia means a lot? Don't do it. Don't give kedushin. Uh, but if he did, it is valid. So therefore, he says, get must get. So therefore, you need to get because we're down. Because Mesak to the Shmuel, he's doubtful. Highly see Aisha's Hamas. What did he mean when it says they see Aisha's Hamas? Did he mean Ila Lavu Dasa? Did he mean, look, don't do it because it's Naveda? Or Ila Latafsa Bukadusha Dasa? Or is he saying that no condition happened? Even if he did it, nothing happens. Omalela Mori Barach Ravashi, Sra Mori, the son of Rach, said to Ravashi. You know how to understand how Mori Barach was able to talk to Ravashi. Mori Barach was Shmuel's son in law. Their grandson, which is like seven or six or eight before. This is what Amema said. Like Shmuel, I want that if she, while waiting to marry a brother in law, without realizing whatever, married somebody else, she needs a get from a suffix. Omar Abash, Abash says, if so, we have to help her out. So, harsh to Domar Amema, Hilch of Shmuel. Now it's like, well, Shmuel, what? Because of a suffix, we give her a get. Now, remember, once she has a get, she cannot live with a koyin. What happens if the brothers in law are koyhanim? If her husband's a koyin, the brother in law koyhanim. If we're going to force her to get a get from the stranger, she can no longer marry her brother in law. Even how you have a koyin, if the brother in law was a koyin, choylet's law, we are going to say that what to the, to the first, we say to the brother in law, the koyin, look, you can't even you can't marry this woman because she already married somebody else. And even if we're to divorce, if we're going to force her to get the, to divorce, be a get. You are going to um, you can't marry her. So this is what we do. We encourage you to give her chalitza and let her remain married with that stranger that she married. Bishadile says in order, that's not fair. He's good. He is good. Even though it's not a fault, but she's gaining from something doing something wrong. In Kemetzina, we find the rule that uh, the sinner actually benefits. Now, usually we use this rule when they do something wrong deliberately. Here we're going a bit further. We're saying that this rule should apply even in a case where it was not done deliberately. But the fact is that she committed a that the, uh, an avera was done. Which in, in like in Lama Mishnah, then why should we gain? Or or actually they're talking about a case where you deliberately decided to get married to a stranger. So why should the stranger gain benefit that he can keep her and the brother-in-law is, uh, has to give her chalitz? So this is what Rabashi was saying. If the brother-in-law was a Yisrael, then get. So we say to this to the stranger, give her a get because that Shmuel says we're not sure. So let's be machmer, give her a get. But who to learn? She could go back to the brother-in-law because maybe it's not really it's, it's as if she never really got married to the other guy, and she can go back to the brother-in-law. Um, um, he said these rules, and we have to explain what he means. He said, Yevama, Kedushin ain't ba, Nesuyin ain't ba. By Yevama, if a stranger goes ahead and gives her Kedushin, it doesn't happen. This is like Rav said, there's no Kedushin. But then it goes a step further, there's no marriage either. What does that mean? What do you have to repeat it for? If you tell me there's no there's no engagement, obviously they're not married either. So what do you have to stress? There's no marriage there either. Amos, you're right. Say it the other way around. 
Kedushin v'nesuyin einba. So the first way is right. We mean to say we put it together. It's not two separate cases. There's no engagement, no marriage, nothing happens. However, he boys him another version of Rav. Minus yeshba business. What do you mean that um, we're talking about a case here where let's say she married a stranger thinking that her husband is dead. And then afterwards, and nobody's your husband died before your son. And then afterwards, find another way around. So she needs a get. Why? Because business, we treat it as if it's nus. So we're saying over here that condition there isn't. In other words, you shouldn't get engaged to a stranger. But if she got married to a stranger, yeshba, and she needs a get. It's like znus. What do you mean like znus? <clears throat> like Rav Nuna, Dom Rav Nuna said, <clears throat> Rav Nuna said, Shemeres Yavah. That if a woman is waiting, let's say, to marry a brother-in-law, she's in if she committed znus, she didn't get married, she did znus with a stranger. Asuna Yavama, it's forbidden to leave Yavama. And that's what the Rav Gidl says in the name of, of Rav. That, uh, um, that a Yavuma, a Yavama, has, um, there's no condition if she goes ahead and gets engaged, but if she gets married to another person, even though they're not married, it's only Znus, but that's enough to make her usher to a brother-in-law. It would make it usher to a brother-in-law. And this is not like Rab who said before, um, so this is another version of Rab. So before we said, um, that Rab said at the top of the page there, Rabbi Yehuda said the name of Rab, that there's no condition by Yavama, you don't need a divorce, nothing else. Here we're saying that if she has a, a znus liyavama, she's forbidden to the brother-in-law. Because it's znus, and we follow Rav Amnun. Says the Gemara, um, <coughs> says the Gemara, because Rav said she gets a divorce from her, there's it is, it is no condition, nothing else, everything's all right. Says the Gemara further, um, and, and, and uh, <coughs> um, you boys, another version is, the way we said in the beginning that she is considered married to the stranger and she needs a get, but not because they're engaged because there's no condition, but only because we're worried about appearances. The people will see that she actually got married and then they see she walks out without a divorce. They're going to say, well, look, she got married, must be her husband first gave her a divorce. And now she got married to this person and she doesn't need a get. Does that mean if the second marriage you don't need a divorce? For parents' sake, we have to go ahead and do something to make sure um, that she needs to get. But if she only got engaged, we well, don't need a divorce because um, we raised that before. That even if a Bezin rule based on one age, you can marry a second person. And then the, the Bez, the, then the first husband comes back, you don't need a divorce on the second guy because there's never a marriage in the first place. <clears throat> Because we said that even if the second guy, if um, if she got engaged, to, sorry, if she got engaged to a, a second person, we said that even if the second person gives her a divorce, nothing happened. So you don't need a divorce. So therefore, if she only got engaged, you don't need a divorce at all. Um, at all. When our group, we had a, a meeting and we decided, ain't condition types by Yavama. There's no condition whatsoever. By Yavama, we dash on the top of the page, like Tia, uh, uh, H's, there's no, the, the, there's no, what do you call it? There's no um, divorce at all, because there's no condition. Isn't this our Mishnah? Isn't this our Mishnah where it says clearly that there's no condition? There's no condition if she marries a stranger. Where's our Mishnah? It's not we learned. Uh, we learned the following Mishnah. I'm Alicia, in Kedush, we learned, person says to a woman, Hare, I, I'm a guy right now, but I plan to convert. Hare at me Here's a ring, and I want the condition to take effect after I convert. Laachar, or um, um, she, he said, Laachar's guy, you're not Jewish yet. I'm giving you a ring right now, and you'll become my wife after you um, convert. Laachar sheshtachli was an eved kanani. He says, after I, I'm freed, I'm a full fledged. Or laachar sheshtachli, you're a shivko after you're freed. She's a married woman. He says to her, when your husband's dead, you're my wife. And he gave her a ring. Or let's say it's his wife's sister. He says, look, if my wife, when my wife dies, I'll marry you. And this is the Kedusha. Or after your brother-in-law gives you Chalitza, right now I cannot marry you, but after your brother-in-law here's a ring. It's not Mekudosh. Why not? So right now we're understanding why is it Mekudosh. Because since right now, I could, if I wanted to marry any, any of these cases, if I wanted to marry right now, you couldn't. So it could only happen afterwards. It's a dava shalad balayilam, and therefore there's no kedushin whatsoever. So it's, doesn't that prove your point that there's no kedushin by yivam? So Rabbi Yana said to Rabbi Yechon, "Hey, big chacham, 
Amalei said, "E lab the dalay lechaspi." He's a saying. If I wouldn't have picked up the earthen shard, me mishkachas magenisa to say you would have. Would you have looked under the to find the diamond? The only reason why you understood the, the mission the way you did it is because I just told you the halacha that if you, uh, if, a, yavama, if a, a woman when you're waiting uh, gets married to another person, kedushin there's no kedushin. So now you look at this mission, you understand it. But the, without my me um, revealing this halacha, you never would have known. Amalei the shlokish, the shlokish came in and said, "One second. The shlokish said, Rabbi Yechonon, Elab. If not for the fact that Kolsar Gavur Rabba, not the fact that the Rabbi Yana, a great man, came along and praised you, have a milk. If it would just be between me and you, I would say you're wrong. There's no right here at all. I would say, I know Mastis and Rabbi Kibi. I would say that the reason why there's no kedushin here is because of Rabbi Akiba who holds that there's no kedushin by Elab, and that's why the this Yevamba cannot. Um, nothing happened between her. And this man, and especially he says it will happen in the future, because of course, Rabbi Kippur, there's no condition, but Chayav Elab. Um, <clears throat> says the Gemara, okay, so they have nothing to do with, but according to us, there is condition, but Chayav Elab. And therefore, according to us, maybe she would be engaged. Says the Gemara, we eat Rabbi Kippur. how can you even say that this is Rabbi Kippur? So explain the rest of the Mishnah. Rabbi Kippur, the rest of the Mishnah is with today, it's not possible, but I'm talking about tomorrow, and it's not valid. And the reason why it's not valid is because the thing has not happened yet. How can you make how can you make a kin? So it's actually something that hasn't happened yet. But Rabbi Kippur holds that we don't care if the thing's not happening. Rabbi Kippur actually holds you could sell, transact something. If I, if I Rabbi Kippur, if he says to her, look, I'm giving you Kedushan now. Not you should be marrying me today because we can't get married, but you should be married to me tomorrow after your brother gives you Chalitza. Uh, it should be effective. Does mean that Rabbi Kiva? Because you know Rabbi Kiva's opinion. Damar Adam Mach Davar Shabbos. It could happen. Now we learned. How do I know Rabbi Kiva holds that Adam Mach Davar Shabbos? Because we learned. If I, if a, if a, if a man, say, a woman says to her husband, I'm, I'm, pl I'm placing a vow. I'm placing a prohibition. Everything Shani Oisa that I earn, you're forbidden to have any benefit from what I earn. You don't have to annul it. Why? Because it's not hers. Since as soon as she got married, everything that she earned belongs to the husband. So therefore, she cannot come along now and, and interdict against it. Um, however, Rabbi Kiva says, Rabbi Kiva says, yes, you have to, um, the husband has to annul the net because otherwise he will not be able to have any benefit. Now, why can she have the right to make the net? Because he's allowed the normal wages that she earns because he provides for her. But if she uh, earns an excess of what she uh, needs from him, that's called ha'adofa. That does not belong to the husband. And that she therefore has a right to make a nether on an asset. So therefore it's ha. Now she didn't earn it yet. It's only in the future. So we see that it clearly holds that the future, we can talk about the future right now and make transactions based on that. She's making a nether today. So therefore we see that it holds that yeah, yes, you've marked the dover shaloi bala oilam. And and, uh, and and therefore my question is, like is how can you tell me the author of Mishra Bakiba? Um <clears throat> Uh, Rabbi Kiva holds that person is Makkish Dov Loyalam, says the Gemara. Rabbi Shalom Shalom answers back. That's not Pshat in the Mishnah. Rabbi Shalom Shalom said, but I met her, she says, Yekachu Yodai Lo Oiseyin. She, she's not saying my future earnings are forbidden to you. That hasn't happened yet. How can she ask it? She's saying that my hands, which are present right now, are also to you. Anything that's produced from my hands. So what's she asking? The hands. And therefore, it's 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 Bolayla. Uh, the Adayim is the mama, the hands are right here. And therefore, Rabbi Kiva holds that this is not really that, that um, Rabbi Kiva also holds that Adobah Shaloi Bal Oilam does not work. And that's why Rabbi Elishlaki says everything in our Mishnah can be Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Kiva holds Dobah Shaloi doesn't work. And why by Ibama doesn't work? Rabbi Kiva holds the Chai Vilam doesn't work. And it has nothing to do with this din that a Yevama who cannot get engaged to an outsider. Upligan, this view of Rabbi Kibbe, that he doesn't hold that a person can transact this oil and argues with Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak, which we'll talk about tomorrow, Mitzvah. Okay.